So this is uh, the week of September 4th through the 8th. And we are getting into pairing functions, okay? The last time we did this, the last time I introduced this, uh, students were a little um, confused on what was going on. So we are going to take some time today to talk about this. All right, so your essential questions for today and for this week probably is what is a parent function? Again, there's that the same essential question from last week. What is a parent function? And what are the transformations that produce the graph? We are actually going to train your brain on how to think about transformation, okay? And don't worry about the 2.1 essential questions just yet. So this is a parent function, right? Remember, it is a function without any manipulations or transformation, okay? So it's the bare minimum of a function. This is the absolute value function. This year, we are getting into this is also the parent function, x squared, okay? This is also a parent function, square root of x. So they're all parent functions because there's nothing around them. There's no operations around them, right? There's no plus one, there's no minus three. We're not subtracting, we're not adding, we're not multiplying, we're not dividing anything around the, the function itself. So that's why we call it a parent function, because that's the start, the bare minimum of what makes a function a function, okay? I showed you guys this slide, right, yesterday or last class, and we're gonna actually talk about each and every, um, transformation here, okay? So the first brain train, train the brain on how to think, right? Let's say, for example, we have this parent function here. Okay? And this is a complicated one, so we're not gonna really, negative four absolute value of x plus five, minus three, right? If we have that parent function, right? Each and every operation that's a part of this function is, is considered a transformation, okay? So what we're gonna, what we're gonna do for the week is if I see that, what type of transformation does it represent? Okay, just what type of transformations does it represent? And in order to ask or in order to answer that question, what type of transformation does the operation represent? We are going to ask ourselves these two questions, okay? So from the parent function, I'm here, we ask ourselves, what operation are we doing? Okay, the possible answers are these three, A, B, and C, adding or subtracting, multiplying, or multiplying by a negative, okay? So, for example, here, right, the example that I wrote down here, what does this plus five, I see plus and minus, right, the operation. Okay, I see a plus, okay? So if I see a plus or a minus or a adding or a subtracting, that is shift. They were shifting, all right? And I put A here to uh, correspond with that A, okay? We're shifting if we're adding or subtracting to what we have, 
to our parent function. If we're multiplying, we're stretching or compressing. B. Okay. And if we're multiplying by a negative, we are reflecting. Okay. So if you ask yourselves, what operation are we doing? It's either a shift, a stretch or a compress, or a reflection based on what operation we're doing, based on your answer. Okay. So I'm going to do some examples. Okay, so that is the first question. What operation are we doing? And uh, based on operation, it'll tell us if it's a shift, a stretch, or compress, or a reflection, right? Okay. The next question is, is there an operation on the inside of our function or on the outside of our function? Okay. Meaning, are we multiplying some is that multiplication? If we're talking about uh, the for the um, the example on your top right hand corner, we're talking about that one, right? We see a multiplication, right? Uh, here, right? We're multiplying by four. Right by a negative four, but we're going to talk about that negative in a little bit. We're we're multiplying by a four, correct? If we're multiplying, it means that we are stretching or compressing, right? We're we're at this, right? Stretching or compressing. The inside. Why it's important. Inside or outside. Is because it'll tell us if it's vertical or horizontal. If it's on the inside of our function, it's going to be the horizontal. Okay. If it's on the outside of the function, it's going to be a vertical. All right. Horizontal means my x value changes. It affects my x values. My vertical means that it's going to affect my y values. All right. So that four, going back to my right upper right hand corner example, the four that we were, were multiplying by, is it on the inside or the outside of the function? One or two? Are we multiplying on the inside of our function? One. Or two, are we multiplying by the outside of our function? Remember, our parent function, our parent function is absolute value of x. Okay? One or two, inside or outside? Inside or outside? Think about it for a little bit. You guys don't have any answers. Make an educated guess if the four is on the inside or the outside of our function. Yeah, but we're going to talk about the negative in a little bit. Because when you're multiplying by a negative, that represents another transformation. Okay? So the, the four that we're multiplying by, is that inside of our function or outside of our function? One, inside, two, outside. Awesome, it is outside. If you guys are ever um, confused, right? Let me give you guys another example. Okay, and then train your brain to kind of think by reading it out loud. All right, so. Let's. 
You guys see this one, f of x. Okay. You guys see that on the top left-hand corner? Right? Do you two? Can somebody read me the first one? This one here. Read it out loud. Hold on. My mind. And keep in mind that the parent function is absolute value of x. Um, f of x is equal to four times the absolute value of x. And can someone read to me the second one? Thank you. The second one that's right next to it. Can somebody read me the second one? That one is f of x equals absolute value of 4x. Correct? So let's dissect that f of x equals 4 times the absolute value of x, right? Audio lean, I hear absolute value of x. That must be on the, the 4 must be on the outside. That makes sense? The second one here, absolute value of 4x. I do hear absolute value of x. Right? But it changed. It's 4x. Correct? So that's on the inside. You guys see the difference? Yeah. You guys can hear it. You guys say it slowly. Absolute 4 times the absolute value of x or absolute value of 4x. Yeah. Okay. If you guys can see the parent function, it's on the outside. The operation is on the outside. If you guys cannot see the absolute or the, the parent function, it must be on the inside. That makes sense? Okay, so that's what inside and outside means. All right? And then when we um, multiply by a negative, we are just reflecting it. Any questions on this slide here? No. And we'll break down reflection in our um, in our next video. Okay, our next class. All right, that's it for today.